Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 3.2, place value of decimals. Please pause and write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to read and write decimals through the thousands. Please pause to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Before we jump into today's Unlock the Problem, let's go over a couple lesson notes. Today we're going to jump into the wide world of decimals. Decimals exist after the decimal point in a number. For most of fifth grade, we've looked at the, the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, and we've been looking over here. For the next couple of units, we're going to be looking over here. So if I have a number like 15 and 2 tenths, then I would say I have 1 ten, 5 ones, and 7 tenths. And we know that this is 7 tenths because it's after the decimal. And a decimal is part of a whole number. It's smaller than a whole number. We call this tens because it would take we would get to 9 and then 10 and then we would move it back over here. So we can think of the tenths as 1 over 10. So then the hundredths we could think of 1 over 100. And we could think of the thousandths as 1 over 1000. So if we remember back to our exponent powers, this would be negative 10 to the third because there's three zeros. This would be negative 10 to the second and this place value would be negative 10 to the one because there's one zero. So decimals exist to the right of numbers. We commonly see decimals in money and you'll hear me talk a lot about decimals when talking about money. Please write all these notes down in your notebook before continuing on with your flip lesson. Our Unlock the Problem begins with the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in New York is 1.726 miles long. We could also read this as 1 and 726 thousandths miles long. It is the longest underwater tunnel for vehicles in the United States. To understand this distance, we need to understand that the place value of each digit in 1.726. We're going to use a place value chart to understand decimals. Whole numbers are to the left of the decimal point, and decimals are to the right of the decimal point. The thousands place is to the right of the hundreds place. So here's our thousands place, if you remember back from our notes. Then our hundredths and our tenths, then here's our decimals. And then over this way would be our whole number. So we're looking at the number 1 and, when we see a decimal, we say the word and, 1 and 726 thousandths. And we say the name of the number that it ends in. So because the 6 is in the thousandths place, that's why I say 726 thousandths. We can also look at this in expanded form with how much each place value is worth. The 1 is in the 1's place, so it would be worth 1 times 1. The 7 is in the 10's place, so it is worth 7 times 1 tenth. The two is in the hundredths place. It is worth two times one hundredth. And the six is in the thousandths place. It is worth six times one thousandths. This is what we call the value. The place value of the digit six in 1.726 is in the thousandths place. The value of it is 6 times 1 one thousandths, or we could call that 0 0.006, or 6 thousandths. We can also write decimals, just like numbers, in standard form, word form, and expanded form. Standard form is our normal way that we see numbers. Word form is written out in words, and expanded form is writing a multiplication of each factor times the place value. So 1 times 1 plus 7 times 1 tenth plus 2 times 1 hundredth plus 
6 times 1 thousandths. Each number is multiplied by the place value that it's in. Let's try this with another number. We're going to use the number 2 and 35 hundredths. So we already have it in standard form. Let's write it in word form. So we have 2 and tells us we have a decimal. 2 and and then the 5 ends in the hundredths place. So that's 2 and 35 hundredths. So I'm going to write the word 30 5 hundredths. And then in expanded form, the 2 is in the 1's place, so I have 2 times 1, plus the 3 is in the 10th's place, so I'm going to write it as 3 times 1 tenth. And I'm going to put that in parentheses so that it stays neat. The next thing I have is a 5, and the 5 is in the 100's place, so it's going to be 5 times 1 one hundredth. I'm going to put that in parentheses as well. Let's practice one more time. This time we're going to start out in word form. The word form says we have 3 and 614 thousandths. So let's write the standard form first. So we have 3 and tells us a decimal 614 thousandths. 14 ends in the thousands place, so I know I'm doing good. Now let's go ahead and do expanded form. So we have a 3 first, and 3 is in the 1's place, so it's going to be 3 times 1. Plus, they did the 6 for us, 6 times 1 tenth, because it's in the tenths place. The next number that we have is a 1, and it's going to be 1 times, it's in the hundreds place, so 1 one hundredth, one over a hundred. And lastly we have a four, four times, it's in the thousands place, so one, one thousandths, one over a thousand. Great job! Let's look at a decimal in a word problem. It says, the silk spun by a common garden spider is about 0 0.33 millimeters thick, or three thousandths thick. A common used sewing thread is about 0 0.3, or three tenths millimeters thick. How does the thickness of the spider and the thickness of the thread compare? In order to compare them, we're going to use a place value chart. So let's chart our first number. So we have 0 0.003, 3 thousandths. And our other number is 0 0.3, 3 tenths. So next, let's look at how we're going to compare these two. It says we're going to count the number of decimal places to in the, that the 3 is different. So we have a 3 here, and we have a 3 here. And so it has, 0 0.3 has blank fewer decimal spaces. So it has 1, 2. It has 2 fewer decimal spaces. 2 fewer decimal spaces is like 10 times 10. So we could think of that as 100. It has two zeros. 100 has two zeros. So we know that it's 100 times smaller. 0 0.3 is blank times as much as. So that would be 100. It's 100 times as much. So if I took this number and multiplied it by 100, I'd get this number, which makes sense because look, there's our two zeros again. Lastly, 3 thousandths is blank of 3 tenths. So it's 1 one hundredth because it's a smaller one first and then the larger one. So we use the fraction. So the thread is blank times as thick as a garden spider's silk. It's 100 times as thick as a garden spider's silk. The thickness of the garden spider's silk, now we flipped it, is 1 one hundredth of that thread.
So we have to be careful if we're looking at it from a larger thing to a smaller thing, or if we're looking from a smaller thing to a larger thing. That will determine whether we use a fraction or a whole number factor. Time for our lesson activity. Today's lesson activity has three parts. It says, write the value of the underlying digit. So we have two and 792 thousands. We're looking for the nine. What place value is the nine in? Remember, place value is, an, is its address. Where does it live? Is it in the ones place, the tens place, the thousands place? Step two says, which two has the most value. So in this problem, in this number, we have two twos. Which two is bigger, the first two or the second two? And part three, how many times larger is the largest value of the two? So if we look at this two and we look at this two, how many times larger? What would I need to multiply by in order to get those numbers to be the same? Part three is a little bit tricky. Do one and two and try three. And if you get stuck, we'll talk about it at the teacher table. This needs to be done in your math notebook. Great job, fifth graders.